Hey, so I just wanted to do a review on the Rokuko SmartSuit Pro. Uh, I've been using it for quite a while now, and I'm sponsored by Rokuko, and I've been sponsored by Exxon's in the past, and so I get a ton of questions, especially around uh, what the benefits are of Rokuko and where it has problems and that kind of thing. Um, obviously, it's a significantly cheaper suit than Exxon's, I've had the Rococo suit now for about a year, and I've gotten to do a ton of shorts and a ton of experiments with it, doing basemen, monkeys, elves, gnomes, trolls, soldiers fighting, all kinds of stuff. And one of the things you realize when you own one of these suits and have that ability to just put it on whenever you want, you start to think about mocap a little bit differently because it becomes not as big of a deal to make changes and try new things and decide that you want to change how a character holds himself or walks or if you realize things are not lining up quite right you can just recapture this suit can connect directly to a laptop I don't suggest you use that you can get all the benefit of a Wi-Fi connection by getting a battery pack that has a Wi-Fi router in it this has 5G and 2G options it's a uh, RAV power I'm sure there are others this is just the one I happen to get um, but I use this as both the battery for the suit and the Wi-Fi for the suit so I can have a fast, reliable connection to a laptop while mobile. So once the suit is set up, it's pretty easy to just unzip, jump in, and pull all the straps, which makes it fast to put on. And then as long as your computer and suit are on the same network you used last time, just plugging it into a battery makes it instantly show up on the Rococo Studio. So that's a really amazing feature to be able to step into this thing, zip it up, pull some straps, and you're and as soon as you plug it in, you're ready to rock. Um, you do have to do a calibration, the, which is a uh, neutral pose. We wait three seconds, and then it gives you about three seconds of standing still. Um, not a difficult thing. So I record by myself most of the time. So in the back, there's a pocket that's designed for you to slide a battery into. They give you recommendations on which batteries to buy. I own one of those batteries, but like I said, I switched to the uh, wireless router and battery combo so that I could be more mobile. So the thing that I have done, instead of putting the battery in the back, because that's hard to reach when I'm trying to record by myself, um, I've simply had the battery in the side pocket and that way I can plug into it pretty easily and unplug it pretty easily. So if I need to take a break and go do something, I can unplug it, go do the thing, come back, plug it back in, and I'm just back rolling with my mocap again. So the biggest problem with this suit though is it is not magnetically immune. All of these sensors are magnetic, so metal things around you will affect the sensors. And sometimes that's non-noticeable and sometimes it can be a little bit frustrating. So that's a factor that you have to take into account. So that's one of the reasons that Exxon's is beneficial. I initially called my videos affordable mocap, but a lot of people had problems with that because they didn't feel 2,500 was in a affordable price range. Um, however, I think as far as the prosumer market is concerned, um, a prosumer video production specialist is going to be looking at a $2,500 camera pretty reasonably um, and I think the same should and, and does go for uh, video games or animation or anything like that if you're trying to get into a uh, indie level $2,500 should be a pretty reasonable space uh, you're also getting something very comparable with the Exxon suit which is uh, three or four times the price as a starting point and both these suits are actually pretty good deals compared to the tens of thousands of dollars you can spend going to a motion capture studio to work with a volume. I think where the Rococo really shines is people that are planning on doing stuff from home and have a um, pretty mid-tier budget. So the big benefit with something like Rococo or Exxon's is you have freedom because you don't have a volume you have to be in. A volume is a series of cameras that have to uh, be able to see one space from as many angles as possible. And with these suits, they are rotationally based. So your translation is calculated by a piece of software that interprets impact with a surface. And that's how it knows how you move forward. So one of the parts that people seem to overlook with this software is 
it's very important to go into the software and make sure your impacts make sense because the software is just guessing. So the human eye can be a great way to look and see, does it look like the, the foot is shifting direction quickly? Does it look like this is where a person is landing and impacting the ground? And is this a place where the foot has stopped connecting with the ground and you want to register that data? This is a little run I did. I'm supposed to be an ostrich or like a, it's an alien, but it's like an ostrich looking alien. And you can see like sometimes, sometimes it guesses and it's pretty right. Like there, it's like obviously the foot is up, but then it thinks that the foot is impacted, but you can tell by the way my foot is that it's still coming down, right? So, and then there's that little moment when it hits. Um, so you can adjust these bars down here and you can see how much like it almost looks right. But then when you start thinking about it, you're like, no, that doesn't make sense. Why? Like it says that it's lifting up. But then when you actually look at how the foot's moving, it's not rotating like it's lifting up yet. So it's that that rotation of the foot that's really important. And that's part of the the piece of this data that is good to know is that since these trackers are rotationally based, the rotation is really what you want to pay attention to as the person cleaning up. Okay, so let's hit process right now just on that and see what that section looks like now that it's a cleaner version. So you can see that's like night and day. Just the difference between running before and running now is completely different. There's also a bunch of other tools you can use. Like the foot IK is basically like, uh, so there's some allowance of the feet to slide a little bit when they hit the ground. So for instance, like, you know, it, not every foot movement is a perfect stick to the ground. Sometimes you do like little shifts and your fo foot slides. Um, so the mocap data is trying to allow that. But if you turn on foot IK, then uh, it will assume that anytime the foot is hitting the ground, it has to stay there and not slide. And it does a pretty good job of not sliding anyway. Um, you have things like drift fix, which is you, you basically change the starting point and end point of a section of your, your mocap and so that you can offset if you feel like the character is going too far to a, to an angle when you meant to be going straight or whatever. Um, locomotion legacy, I believe the main, I don't, at this point, pretty much don't use that. Like your feet are more likely to slide, but I think also you you can do more complicated things. Like if you're wanting to do like some weird movement and you want the impact with the ground, like a, a handstand or something, I think it might work better with that. Um, for those kinds of things, uh, oh, and also there's treadmill, which treadmill is, is exactly what you would picture. Um, it is, you're basically on like a sliding ground, but it keeps, it keeps, um, the fall into the ground as part of the data. So something that I actually do sometimes, which uh, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about, but actually if you turn off all of them, you get hip lock, which sometimes I feel like hip lock is a really nice tool to have if you're wanting to, um, for instance, I've had things where I wanted to have a character sitting for a long time. And if you sit for a long time, the Sometimes the motion data will try to adjust you thinking your leg is sliding or uh, if you're having actually a great example of uh, a way you can deal with magnetic interference issues is if you're doing something where there is a magnetic in interference happening on a leg but the leg is not necessary for the movement like driving a car or something like that, um, you can just do hip lock and then you could have your guy doing his little steering wheel turning motion and uh, you don't have to worry about if the leg starts doing something a little wonky. And then they, you have loopable. You can do start from origin, uh, closed loop. So closed loop will keep them in place. Start from origin, I think actually if you're not doing the continuous run might actually be a problem now that I'm seeing it. Let me see. Now do it. Yeah, so start from origin looks like it only works if you're keeping the translation data. Um, but if you are uh, going to loop it, it looks like it currently, but I'm sure as soon as they see this video, they'll make an update for the next one. Um, 
And then align motion axis. Let's see. I think that is just basically straighten you out. Um, very similar to um, the drift fix tool, I believe. And then I'll uh, I'll probably do a little test render with the ostrich so you can kind of see what that looks like. I probably won't use the arm data because maybe I will. We'll see. I don't know what that'll look like. Fun experiment. So the huge advantage to these suits is you can try, iterate, and explore things really easily from home um, or from anywhere, really. Rococo is still working on their cleanup tools, but they make incredible advancements and have some of the best customer service I've ever seen. Um, I actually was just working with their loop tool. However, I didn't want to have a single loop that I had to repeat because I wanted to maintain the translation data. So I mentioned that to Rokuko, and they said, sounds great, we'll put it in the next update. And that really is how responsive they are. They really want this thing to be the best tool it can be for you, and are trying to make as much bang for your buck as possible. So the other thing you have to understand is not just the suit and how to capture good data, but you also have to understand how to integrate it with whatever software you have. Those tools are getting easier for things like Unreal and Unity, they can still be difficult to understand with some 3D software. Um, I am still learning stuff with Cinema 4D and I've been using it for a long time. If you're in visual effects or motion graphics or short film artist or an uh, indie game developer or any of those types of things or just someone at home that's wanting to explore those areas for your own purposes, um, I think this is a really good suit and I think as long as you're willing to be patient with the occasional magnetic field problem and have the ability um, to try some things out when things are not quite working with that, you should definitely be able to come out with some amazing results from the suit.